When you think of a drive-by shooting, an image of mobsters with Tommy guns or of a black man hanging out of a car window might pop in your head. Actually, one of the first if not the first drive-by to ever happen in history was in East St. Louis, Illinois in 1917 in what is known as the East St. Louis Massacre. During the early 1900s, many black people migrated out of the South looking for a better life. The opportunity was provided by companies who recruited blacks with promises of employment and stability. Due to World War I, many industrial workers left to join the military, in turn creating a need for more workers. The need for labor also increased because companies went from manufacturing goods to manufacturing military supplies. Some blacks strived and were able to move up the economic and political ladder in East St. Louis, while others made ends meet however they could. Over a course of two years, the black population grew. Estimates range from 10,000 to 12,000 blacks had left the South for East St. Louis. Local whites were displeased to say the least because the influx of black people threatened to take their jobs. Union members went on strike expressing their complaints about all the hundreds of newly hired black migrants. Racial tensions flared and a small uprising was put down by the National Guard. Months later, after a city council meeting, angry whites attacked any black person they could find. Accounts are unclear but rumors spread of either a black man killing or attempting to rob a white man. When word got around, angry white mobs went and beat any black person they could find, pulling them from streetcars and trolleys. A Ford Model T full of white men did a drive-by shooting at black homes and churches. Armed blacks gathered together to protect themselves and shot into the next Ford Model T, killing two men who actually turned out to be police officers investigating the previous drive-by shooting. The next day, whites started beating blacks with guns, rocks, and pipes. They set fire to homes and shot and hanged residents as they fled their burning homes. It was a complete massacre. Many blacks in the town were unaware what was going on. Blacks were shot to death, mutilated, and thrown in the Mississippi River. It was like scenes from a Hollywood horror film. Children being thrown back into flaming houses. People being boarded up in their houses before they were set afire so that they could not escape. Hundreds of blacks fled across the Ez Bridge over the Mississippi River to St. Louis to escape the violence. Many swimming across while bullets whizzed past their heads. Those who could not swim drowned in the Mississippi. Others sought refuge in city buildings. Small grassroots groups of black men fought back in different sections of the city. What happened, they were pinned down in, um, in different buildings and houses on Exchange Avenue. And he said to flush the men out because they couldn't... Um, they couldn't uh, get the better of them at times in certain locations while they were fighting. So he said they, was, they went to snatching people's children and little children and throwing them up into the air, shooting them. But many could not fight back. Although the police and National Guard were there, many witnesses expressed a view that the police did not care and encourage the barbaric violence. Nothing was done to disperse the angry mobs. The riots raged for nearly a week leaving nine whites and, according to some accounts, between 39 and 45 black people dead. Many felt the number of black deaths reported wasn't accurate, being that a lot of recovered bodies went to independent undertakers. Many were burned to death. It looked like that creek was just running blood. It was just that bloody. And for them to say 45 blacks were killed, it was that's an understatement. It was much more than that. The number was greater than that. A coroner's report declared a one-year-old boy and two-year-old girl found shot in the head. Property damage was estimated close to 400000 about $8 million today. More than 6,000 black citizens fearing for their lives fled the city. Hearings on the massacre before the Committee on Rules and the House of Representatives began on August 3, 1917. A federal investigation was eventually opened, and in October, the state tried 25 blacks and 10 whites on charges related to the massacre, including homicide and incitement to riot. Included among the defendants was Dr. Leroy Bundy, a black dentist and prominent leader in East St. Louis's black community. He was formally charged with inciting a riot, which was a way of shifting the blame. The trial was held in the county court of St. Clair County, Illinois. Bundy, along with 34 other defendants, of whom 10 were white, was convicted and sentenced to prison in connection with the riot. In the end, justice was never served. Narciss Gurley, age 70, was afraid to leave her burning house in East St. Louis until the burning walls collapsed. Her arms bear the burns of that horrible day. Malola McGee, arms had to be amputated because she had been shot. Marcus Garvey had this to say of that horrible day. Millions of our people in slavery gave their lives that America might live. From the labors of these people, the country grew in power until her wealth today is computed above any two nations. With all the service that the Negro gave, 
he is still a despised creature in the eyes of white people. For if he were not to them despised, the whites of this country would never allow such outrages as the East St. Louis Massacre. This is a massacre that will go down in the history as one of the bloodiest outrages against mankind for which any class of people could be held guilty. This is the story of the East St. Louis Massacre.